Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section, we'll talk about language, thought, and culture. It is well captured in the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, which was developed by the American linguist and anthropologist Benjamin L. Whorf and Edward Sapir. The hypothesis holds that a culture is embodied in the language of the people who speak the language. This cultural framework shapes the thoughts of the language's speakers. We think in terms of the words and meanings of our language, which is an expression of our culture. The Sapir-Whorf hypothesis has two versions, strong and weak, or the linguistic determinist interpretation or the linguistic relativity interpretation. Linguistic determinism believes that language structure controls thoughts and cultural norms. Therefore, the world is largely predetermined by language. The differences between languages reflect the basic differences between diverse cultural worldviews. Linguistic relativity believes that culture is controlled by and controls language. Language provides a conceptual category that affects how the speaker's perception is encoded and stored. Consider some examples of how language categorizes our world. In the Chinese language, there are no single words equivalent to the English words cousin. Instead, Chinese has different words for one's elder or younger brother or sister-in-laws. Chinese even has different words for mother's elder brother and younger brother, father's elder brother and younger brother, and so forth. This diversity of vocabulary may indicate that in China, the interpersonal relationship between an individual and his or her extended family is more complex and perhaps more important than that of an English-speaking country. We create meaning for our world by highlighting certain qualities, characteristics, and organizing seemingly random events into meaningful categories. For example, we divide different modes of travel into the fastest, plane, faster, train, slower, car or bus, or most comfortable, taxi, most crowded, subway and bus, etc. Some examples show that culture indeed influences the language. In Arabic, the camel plays significant roles in people's life. So there are more than 40 words for camel. In English, we have the word corner, as in street corner, corner of the room, corner of the desk. In Japanese, there really is no single word that has the same comprehensive semantic range as the English word. In Japanese, there is the word kado, which refers to a projecting corner, a natural object, like the corner of a table. Then there is the word sumi, which designates the contained inner space between converging walls, such as the corner of a room or inside a box. Language categorizes our experiences without our full awareness. Only when one learns a second language and moves back and forth between the first language and the second language, does he realize the influence of a language on perception. The Sapir-Whorf hypothesis shows that language, thought, and culture are closely connected. As a part of culture, language 
influences our perception of the world, and thus the meaning conveyed by the words. Correspondingly, the language also reflects its culture and environment.